I've covered quite a few curse techniques already in the past, but surprisingly, I haven't really covered Yuji Itadori, the main character of the anime. And since Yuji is one of my most favorite characters on the show, I'm gonna do him some justice and finally cover his curse technique. Hey Siri, what's Yuji Itadori's curse technique? <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. Hey Siri, what's Yuji Itadori's curse technique? Nothing. Fuck. So yeah, it turns out that Yuji does not have a curse technique. But it doesn't mean he's just some normal kid that got his lucky break. And yes, I'm looking at you, Deku. Why are you bullying me? No, in fact, Yuji was already known to have inhuman capabilities long before becoming a Jujutsu Sorcerer. I mean, this dude threw a shot put so hard he bent a goalpost, wanted to save his friend, so naturally he drop kicks through a window of a two-story building, and apparently he can run a 50 meter track in three seconds. To put that into perspective, the world record for a 50 meter dash is 5.56 seconds. Yeah, Yuji can do it in three. <laughs> can you imagine just going to a track and field meet? You're all pumped up, you've been training for months, alright, and then you get into position, and this dude just pulls up next to you in Tim's and a hoodie, and you just get completely smoked. Don't worry though, despite his lack of a technique, Yuji does have some abilities he uses to exercise curses. I just wouldn't call them curse techniques, or in this case, innate techniques, which is pretty much just a technique that you're born with. I guess the closest thing that Yuji has to his um, own thing is his divergent fist. It's basically a punch that has a delay, but how? Well, the way it works is, Yuji first surrounds his fist with a thin layer of cursed energy. And once his fist makes contact with something, then the rest of his cursed energy comes piling on. Hence why it's a delayed attack. This is especially useful against unsuspecting enemies because the delay is often unpredictable, and the enemy usually lets their guard down after the first initial hit. Don't be fooled though by the quote-unquote thin layer of cursed energy, because the first impact of Yuji's punch still carries 20% more power than the average sorcerer. Top that off with the second impact, and you'll end up like this. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. Like I said though, Yuji's divergent fist isn't really considered a cursed technique. Rather, it's more of cursed energy manipulation. See, it turns out, Yuji didn't actually know how to control his cursed technique at this point in the series. As Gojo said, Yuji's cursed energy can't keep up with his speed. And since he can't control it, what ends up happening is that it just shoots out in a straight line. And while Gojo says it could be a huge weapon for him, Aoi Toto, Yuji's best friend, believes it actually hinders his progress of becoming stronger. So instead of letting his cursed energy fall behind, Toto taught Yuji how to apply it just before making contact. If you're caught up with the anime, you'll know that I'm talking about the Black Flash. This is a very complicated attack to pull off because it requires the user to apply their cursed energy within one millionth of a second or in one millionth of a second in numbers. Let me check that. The answer is 0 0.000001 seconds. Safe to say, it's pretty damn hard to do, but the rewards are huge. So when a user is able to pull off a black flash attack, the power of their strike is raised to the power of 2.5. Now, it doesn't have to take an entire complex power scaling system to understand this concept. All it takes is basic math. Let's say Yuji has a base attack of 100. Multiply that by 2.5 and you get 250 attack damage. Which is pretty good, that's more than double the damage. But if you get that same 100 and raise it to the power of 2.5, you get 100,000. That's, hmm, let's see, 100 times pi raised to the power of Naruto's Nen ability divided by the number of Luffy's Dragon Balls uh, comes out to be... One thousand times stronger. Now a wise philosopher once said... That's a lot of damage! 
So it goes without saying that having to apply cursed energy in 0.000001 seconds requires a great deal of concentration. But the cool thing about Black Flash is that once you get over the initial barrier of having to pull it off in the first place, the user's senses are temporarily heightened and controlling cursed energy becomes incredibly simple. As Nanami describes it, the user enters a zone-like state similar to what sports athletes experience in a game. Oh, sorry, I forgot you're a gamer. Uh, hmm. Basically, it's being able to clutch 1v5 ace as CT, entry fragging through mid while the enemy team is already camping in B site. You get what I'm saying here? Good, let's move on. <laughs> I just realized it's starting to come off that Yuji basically just has no, not in anime on my side. Wait, you ah! But actually, he's very well versed in martial arts, specifically Taido, which is a Japanese martial art created by Seiken Shukumine, who wanted to make a more flexible version of karate. So Yuji is capable of performing quite a few moves. One of them is the knee release, which is a technique that eliminates starting movements. It's called knee release because he releases his knees, hips, and shoulders to guide him to his opponent's feet instead of falling down. And a manji kick is the combination of Taido and the knee release, where Yuji does this sort of cartwheel and uses the momentum of that to kick the living shit out of his opponent's head. By adding cursed energy to these moves, Yuji is able to greatly damage and sometimes even exercise curses with them. I always like to think of Yuji as Rock Lee. You know, similar to Yuji, Lee also can't perform any jutsu techniques, but instead uses martial arts or taijutsu to battle with. And it was shown that despite not having any innate ninjutsu, Lee was still one of the strongest characters in Naruto. Y you know, before Kishimoto decided to drop the nerf hammer on his head. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, Yuji doesn't need a cursed technique to be considered a strong jujutsu sorcerer. He just needs to get a green jumper and a bowl cut. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed your time, and we're close to nearing half a thousand subscribers, and it's actually crazy seeing how many of you are watching my content. I really can't ask for anything else, you know, other than liking, commenting, and subscribing. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.